Well, good morning. I'm Tina Madison White and welcome to the Asheville View. I am here today with Ray Jeffrey, the Managing Director of the Wortham Center for Performing Arts. Ray, how are you? I am doing great. Thanks so much for having me, Tina. Oh, it's a delight. So we're here today to talk about just the arts community in Asheville, how it's handling COVID, um, why it's important, um, what we could do to better support it. What is the arts community in Asheville? Do, can you define it in any way? Sure. Uh, so we are lucky to live in a really rich uh, arts and culture community in Western North Carolina, and that encompasses all forms of visual and performing arts and storytelling and just culture across the board. So we're, we're all artists in some way. How's the community holding up? Are some parts holding it better than others? Yeah, I would say, of course, the performing arts, because of the mass gathering limits, have been the hardest hit. You know, we were the first businesses to close. We will be the last businesses to open. But we are seeing improvement across the board. Uh, mass capacity restrictions have been increased. Uh, museums are allowed to open. Some outdoor venues have been allowed to open at higher and higher capacity. So there is definitely a light at the end of the tunnel. I understand that some theaters um, have either shuttered temporarily or some may have gone away completely. I heard, for example, Mothlight. Yes, I believe we lost Mothlight and Ambrose West, unfortunately. The, uh, do you think most will, will recover? I think the next six months will be really telling for recovery. We've been fortunate to get through a lot of us on PPP, uh, virtual programming through the support of our donors and the North Carolina CARES Act. Um, but we do need to reopen and get back to business and, and start doing what we are here to do. At a human level, what, what are members of the arts community doing during COVID? I mean, they're sort of taken away from particularly performing artists. They're being, they're being denied their, what really gives them their um, mojo every day. Yeah, that, that's a really important point that most people in the arts community do not obviously do it as just a job. It is part of what makes them whole. It's um, what makes them healthy. And they do it because they love, they love it. It is their life. So it's not only the loss of a job and income during this time, it's, it's a loss of that line that really keeps you alive and drives your passion and, and your, your flame during this time. So you and I know that arts are important. Um, but, but let's make the case for why, what, what the role of arts is in, in our community, um, economically, socially, and, and otherwise. What role do, do the arts play in just bringing our community together? That's a big question. So, obviously, I, I could talk about this for hours, right? We we are inherently all born as artists. We are born singing. We're, we're born naturally inclined to dance, um, to draw, to finger paint, all of those things. And, and we do those things to express our joy, our sadness, to, to mourn and to come together um, and to connect with other people. And at some point, between childhood and adulthood, art somehow becomes extra, right? It becomes an option and not a necessity. Um, we don't maybe take art class in school anymore. So we don't sing, we don't draw. Um, and it's evolved in our culture that once you are an adult, the, the art is extra. It's maybe just there in perception for those who have income, wealth, and of a certain class. That is absolutely not true because we use it in so many aspects of our life. We walk into a church. We, we sing in praise. We um, listen to music at a wedding. We hear poetry as part of the pres presidential inauguration. We come together as a community, um, for example, Everyone probably saw that great 
uh, video in Italy where people were singing out of their windows during COVID because they so longed for connection during this time of isolation. And somehow we have forgotten that as a society as a whole, that art is absolutely essential to who we are and how we come together, how we express ourselves, how we tell our history. That is fascinating. I, I would be guilty, I, I think, of one of those who would say that art's important, but optional, I mean, without thinking about it. But as I think back, by far the most meaningful moments to me in my life have all been connected to some form of artistic expression, um, whether it's writing, painting, or performing arts. They, they, um, there are, every peak in my life has somehow been connected to some kind of creative expression. That's a good point. Imagine getting in your car without the radio or, or going to a wedding without music or um, even, even what you see on your television. That all comes from a basis of the arts. I know that you've been working to produce things virtually, uh, some virtual events. How well does that work? Have you found things that translate well to a virtual environment or are we just really compromised as long as we remain virtual? I, virtual is a good substitute for being together when we can't be together. It has provided artists an opportunity to continue to perform and to continue to make some income and organizations to continue to connect and serve their communities. It does not allow the even exchange of energy that you get through a live performance. There is not a substitute for that. So while I think it's, it's been a great fill-in, it is not a substitute. Um, it has provided us with some opportunity for more open access than we've had in the past. So for some of our virtual programs at Wortham, for example, we've seen people from different countries We've seen uh, people from seven states away who've been able to access the programming much more easily than they would if it was in-house here. You've talked before about the role of arts in building empathy or connecting people. Could you say a little bit more about that? Artists are the change makers in a, in a community, right? If you think about every vital uh, part in history and the art that came out of that, and how we go back and relive those stories and the experience at that point in the history, it typically comes from artists. Um, if you are trying to put yourselves in someone else's shoes, and hopefully you are, it's more important this year than, than ever before, you can do that through the arts. So you, you live someone else's story you, you step into their experience in a way that so many other um, formats don't provide. Can you share a personal experience where you were transformed or opened up by art, just at a, very personal? I am transformed and opened up by art every day. So my personal experience might be a little excessive. <laughs> but I, one of my transformational uh, experiences in, in this setting um, was with a child, actually. We were presenting a performance about the Nazi Holocaust. And we had a theater full of sixth graders who had learned about this in the classroom, right? They'd read the books, they'd done the tests, they'd done the quizzes, they knew what happened during this time period. But this production allowed them to step into the shoes of a character who was, a, uh, was in the Nazi army and to see things from their perspective. And this kid was floored, a sixth grader walked out of here in tears. He said, I had, I had no idea. A sixth grader, a middle schooler, openly crying. Wow. Never would have had that experience in the classroom. I remember I run in one of my other roles, as, as you know, Blue Ridge Pride. And a couple of years ago, we were invited by Shindig on the Green, along with other minority groups to have a booth there. And uh, they've never been unwelcoming, 
but it when I talked to people in the in the LGBTQ community, they were actually afraid to go there because it just felt just the atmosphere did not feel welcoming and not through any, um, I want to be clear, intent of shindig on the green. It was, um, but we did. And halfway through the performance, they um, welcomed us and this lawn full of people uh, in Peck Square Park just applauded. And our team was just in tears and people came and talked and and I just saw the power of art, which can be segregating, if, if not managed, to, to really connect across communities. Do you think that our arts community, and here I'm now thinking of kind of the institutions like LEAF, like, like your organization, us and, and both other museums and, and festivals, do you think we are good at working across boundaries at connecting the community or do we, or we siloed? I think we definitely have work to do. We always have work to do. We will never be done. And that's definitely the philosophy that we take in our organization. Um, every step leads us to the next step. And I, our community as a whole, I think has more and more come to adopt that and and work towards a larger goal rather than just siloing. In the interest of community service, let me ask you how you would advise people on two things. One, if they like me have been perhaps not thinking enough about the arts and its potential to energize and, and transform them, as we're still living through the, what I hope are the tales of COVID, what could people do for themselves to, to really get reconnected to the arts? You know, take a tour of your community. We've all been in our houses for so long. I know I personally have even forgotten some of the things that are down our side streets. It, it's been a really long year. So take a little tour of downtown, take a tour of our, our performing arts sector. Um, see what's out there, reach out to your friends, check out the virtual content. It's a great way to do a test until you're ready to get back to a live performance and we're ready to have you back. Um, really just start, start to connect because art has amazing healing power. It's going to be really important to bring us all back together after this is over, hopefully soon. And there's no better way to do that than the arts. You had mentioned to me uh, an effort, restart the arts. Um, could you tell, tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. So we're working with, uh, through Arts North Carolina, which is an advocacy organization out of Raleigh, uh, working closely with them and the North Carolina Arts Council to advocate for a program called Restart the Arts, which is asking our state legislators for an $8 million non-recurring um, budget item to restart the arts in North Carolina, and that would be distributed over two years. We have experienced immense job loss, immense business loss, as we talked about earlier. And the performing artists, the arts, they're so important to our culture, statewide, countrywide, community-wide, uh, are really going to need a boost to reopen and recover. So give me some homework. What three things could I do, Tina White do this week, to help restart the arts in, in Asheville and the surrounding area? All right, so Tina White is going to get on Google and she is going to research um, three arts organizations in Asheville or Western North Carolina that she would like to learn more about. I'm writing this down. Okay. okay. And then she is going to reach out to one of those organizations and engage somehow. Maybe you're going to explore an event or maybe you're going to visit a museum and you're going to lastly call a friend and ask a friend to go with you. And I'm going to add a fourth okay. that if you have a great experience that you somehow support that organization by returning again or by somehow contributing as a volunteer or as a donor. Okay. I duly noted. I will do that. All right. I'm going to check up to make sure you did your homework, Tina. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs>
anything else you'd like to share? I just, I appreciate being here with you today and talking with you. And I think this is an incredible program. I'm so glad to see it happening in Asheville. And uh, please let me know what we as a performing arts community can do for you, because that's important as well. Well, thank you. And it, yeah, this really has, art really is more important than I think we give it credit for. And you really got me thinking about that. Thank you so much and good luck. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. And I'll be talking to you soon.